Episode one of The Wheel of Time was choppy, it made some changes, but it also laid the groundwork for the series. Episode two expanded on the story with great character development and world building. Episode three of The Wheel of Time is where the story starts to come into its own. Today I'll be giving my spoiler filled review and reaction to episode three of The Wheel of Time, Amazon's new adaptation of Robert Jordan's legendary work. Join me as I tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and I'll give some general thoughts on the episode before giving it a rating. Quick thank you to the video sponsor, NordVPN, but more on them later in the video. Let's hit the spoiler rating for today. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers through the third episode of the TV show only, and no book spoilers. If you've watched the first three episodes of the show, you are good to watch this video. So generally, I was not a huge fan of episode one. Some of the changes I didn't agree with, and while I did agree with some of the changes they made, I thought they could have used one more episode to properly establish the two rivers and all the characters. I thought things picked up quite a bit in terms of character development in episode two, and I thought it was a drastic improvement over the pilot. Episode three is another big step in the right direction. The group is finally split apart, so we can follow multiple plot lines at once, and I think this will feel a lot more like a typical fantasy show for most viewers because of it. In this episode, we got to see that, even if not all of the plot lines were as strong as the others. So let me go ahead and start with what I loved about this episode. The first thing was the scene of Nynaeve healing Moraine. I loved seeing the gathering of the herbs and Nynaeve really knowing what she was doing. I loved the interactions with Lan during those scenes also. They had a real chemistry, and I like that the show is taking the time to show the beginnings of that relationship. There is also some great explanations of the warder bond there that was an exposition that I loved. I will say one thing the writers on this show are doing a great job of is explaining some of the concepts that are important in the Wheel of Time without long exposition. For the most part, these explanations have been seamless, they make sense. Like Maureen asking Egwene about the three O's rather than just spouting off about him. It felt natural as part of the conversation. Another thing that I absolutely loved from this episode was the dream sequence. The first dream sequence with Rand was great, but this was taking the horror elements to a completely different level, and I am all about that. There is obviously something they're going to be doing with Layla later, like they're setting something up here. I can't wait to see what that is from that specific plot line. And while I wasn't a fan of everything about the Tinkers, which we'll talk more about in a moment, I was a huge fan of the character of Aram, played by Daryl McCormick. He had charisma, and I thought he was super engaging. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him in the next episode, where I think they're going to expand that Tinker plotline. But let's move on and talk about the plotline that I thought absolutely carried the episode and was head and shoulders above the others. The entire plotline with Matt and Rand in Breen Spring was spectacular and super well written. First, the way Tom Marilyn was introduced was awesome. I thought this was actually an improvement on the way it's done in the books, and they have gone for a much grittier version of Tom which I thought worked really well in the episode. I thought the song was awesome, and Tom's interactions and conversations with Matt while they bury the Aiel were one of the highlights of the episode for me. There is so much development done there, and Tom was instantly likable as a worldly person that was able to impart advice and wisdom to the boys, especially Matt in this episode. I loved how we started to see some changes in Matt's personality, not going to get into any spoiler territory here, but it was fun to see that and kind of how subtle it was. But what I think I loved about the episode the most was Izuka Hoyle's Dana and pretty much everything associated with her. She was awesome. She was engaging. Her character was well written. And honestly, I was completely fooled by that subplot. I should have seen it coming and I didn't, which means they did a great job. She was so likable and the reveal where she says was the braid too much was a gut punch moment. Like, damn it. How did I miss that? Uh, I love that it was Tom that ended her, and it was a great explanation of what a dark friend is and how someone could willingly choose to follow the dark one in the story. Again, it was a great way of introducing the concept without a lot of exposition. This plot line was by far the highlight of the episode, and I'm super excited to see what happens next, and I want to see more of Tom Marilyn. I just love that I got to say that, by the way. But before getting into the things I did not love, let me first mention the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the world's number one provider of VPN services. What is a VPN, you might ask? Well, a VPN serves as a third-party connection between you and your internet service provider or a local internet service provider if you're traveling. 
It protects your privacy while you're browsing, keeps people from tracking your movements, both physically and monitoring what sites you go to. Did you know that most internet service providers track literally everything you do online and keep a record of it? They also sell that data. So if you use the internet like at all, a VPN is absolutely necessary. The awesome part is that they are super cheap. The even more awesome part is that you can get one even cheaper. Just click the link in the description of the video. NordVPN is giving all of my viewers an absurd discount on something that's already cheap. I've never heard anybody say I regret having a VPN, but people always regret not having one. So again, click the link in the description of the video and get your super discounted VPN from Nord today. Now back to the video. So let's get into some things that I did not love from the episode. There are actually very few this time around. I, I would say that I thought Egwene and Perrin's plot line was probably the worst of the bunch, just kind of being kind of boring, but that's not much of a change from the books either. But we are missing a character here that it appears they've chosen not to introduce that I think you can kind of feel missing in the episode. Because of that, I thought the introduction of the Tinkers felt a little odd without that particular character. And again, I'm not going to get into spoilers of that, but I did feel the, the missing presence there. I was also not a fan of Tom Marilyn stealing Matt's coin purse back from the other thief and then not giving it back to him. It just felt like something that Tom wouldn't do. But then again, this is a grittier Tom, and I like the way those scenes actually turned out, so maybe it'll work out well. It just felt off in the moment when I saw it. My next major criticism came at the very end of the episode. They see Loghain's captors, the Red Aja, and I was a little underwhelmed at the size of that entourage. It felt like a few people when it should be tons of people with that group. Like, it didn't give the feel that they were transporting the most dangerous man on the continent with them. It just felt like they were out for a stroll. I don't know. It was just maybe I, I felt a little underwhelmed by it. But one thing that isn't a huge deal about this but did weird me out a little bit was the fact that Lan just hops on a horse goes and finds all the Aes Sedai in like an hour and then comes back to Nynaeve. Moraine and him just ride up and meet the group. Uh, it seemed kind of ridiculous to me that they just happened to be right around the corner and Lan knew just where to find this traveling group of Aes Sedai. I didn't like that. It made the world feel far, far smaller than it probably should feel. And perhaps they're going to explain this in the next episode, but as of right now, I did not like that. But outside of those few things, I didn't have much of a gripe with this episode other than one of the plot lines was significantly better than the other two. Overall, I loved the episode and I thought it was the best of the three. I had a feeling that once the group was separated, the show would feel better and paced better. I thought Tom was introduced very well and I'm glad they did it here rather than the place that he's introduced in the books, because there were already too many characters to introduce at that point, and it would have been difficult to give him the time of day. It's nice that they did it here because we got to focus more on Tom as a character, and I just thought that worked better. I think the episodes have gradually gotten better each time, and they are explaining more and more as the episodes pass. It sort of feels like they're starting to hit their stride. Of course, that is if you can accept the changes to the plot from the first episode. I truly think to all of you book purist readers out there, once you can accept some of the original premise changes from episode one, the story really does feel more like The Wheel of Time, and they're fleshing out those changes well in a way that I still think feels a lot like The Wheel of Time that you know and you love. For a score, I think I'm going to give this episode another solid eight. And yes, that's the same score I gave the previous episode, but I feel like this is kind of like an eight plus. It's not quite an 8.5, but I'm sure, but it is for sure slightly better than episode two, which I also gave an eight. So take that for what it is. What did you think of episode three? Let me know in the comments of the video. And again, make sure to like the video if you liked it, of course, and subscribe to the channel. There is so much more content coming. This is just the surface. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Don't forget to check out NordVPN. You can find that in the description of the video along with the Patreon. Huge thank you to everybody that supports the channel on Patreon. You are the wind beneath my wings. You complete me. You had me at hello, all of that. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel as well. I will absolutely love you for it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, peace out.